Welcome to Chemisode on Covalent Molecules. This is part three about covalent molecules and it's about polarity. Okay, so, so far in covalent molecules, what we've looked at is drawing the valence structure, so drawing what they look like. We've looked at naming the molecules and their shapes, and now we're going to go into this thing called polarity. Now, polarity kind of goes about um, and explains the properties of metallic, sorry, not metallic, covalent prop molecules. So, the polarity section here, the first part is looking at um, the properties and explaining the properties of covalent molecules. And the second part is um, looking in a bit more detail about what polarity can tell for us. So the first part here is looking at how we can tell if a covalent molecule is polar. Before we get into it, here are some properties of covalent molecules. The properties of covalent molecules are that they do not conduct electricity, neither the solid nor the liquid state of um, covalent molecules will conduct electricity. It just doesn't happen. Covalent molecules tend to have low melting points or low boiling points, and they have need lots of energy to break them into their separate elements. So let's explain some of these properties and I'll introduce you to a few terms. The no conducting of electricity is pretty simple to explain. Um, basically to conduct electricity, you need charged particles. And we don't have fully charged particles in covalent molecules. Covalent molecules don't have charged particles which are free to move around. The low melting point and boiling points um, they go together and the explanation between this is that we have a weak force that holds these molecules together. The weak force that holds the molecules together is called an intermolecular force. This is a, mole this is a um, force between two standalone molecules. The, lots of energy needed to break them into elements, so lots of energy needed to break this molecule into its constituent elements, so it means breaking this bond between the hydrogen and the oxygen. Because we need a lot of energy, that means the force holding the atoms together is very strong. This force is called an intramolecular force. The intermolecular force is between the two molecules, but the intramolecular force is between the two atoms inside the molecule. If you want to know a way of explaining this or a way of remembering which one is which, the inter and the intra, think about the interweb or the internet, sorry, I should say, the internet. The internet allows you to connect with another school or it allows you to connect with someone else in another town, for instance. So it's between the large, two large things. The intranet, which you might know of, the intranet is within a school itself. So it's within a small network. Inter is between two molecules. Intra is within the same molecule. So there's the properties and there's the basic explanation. What we're going to go into is trying to talk about these intermolecular forces in terms of this thing called polarity. We haven't learned about polarity yet, so let's go have a look at polarity now. Okay, polar things. Now, things that are polar have two distinct opposite ends. Two examples of these is a bar magnet, which has a north and south pole, two definite opposite ends, and our own Earth, which has a north and a south pole as well. All right, polar things have two distinct ends. Now, we're talking about polarity in terms of um, molecules. So let's look at a molecule that is actually polar. This is hydrochloric acid a hydrogen bonded to a chlorine atom. Now, how is this polar? Well, obviously you can see that they're different, but how are they different? What, what makes them different? Now, what makes these two different is the electronegativity that these elements have. The electronegativity is the ability for an element to gain electrons, to pull electrons to itself. Now, hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.2. Chlorine, on the other hand, has a larger electronegativity at 3.16. Now, polar molecules, what we have is a difference here. If you can imagine the two electrons that are being shared within this bond, if chlorine has a greater ability 
to gain electrons, what it's going to do is pull the electrons closer to it. What that means is that the chlorine here ends up with a greater share of electrons on it and becomes slightly negative. This slight negative is denoted by this term called delta, delta negative. And that means the hydrogen, because it hasn't got as many electrons as it should have, because the chlorine is pulling them away, remember, it gets a slight positive. And these are the dipoles that we're talking about when we talk about polarity within molecules. We talk about a delta negative and a delta positive. And which um, element ends up with these delta negatives and positive depend on the electronegativity. The more electronegative an element, the more likely it's going to have a negative, um, slight negative charge. And this is what is meant by polarity. So, what we need to, this is actually, this is a polar bond. This bond has been polarized because the greater share of the electrons is down here at the chlorine. So, that's polar bonds. What does this mean about polar molecules? How can we explain polar molecules? So, our two examples here are of methane, which is CH4, and water, H2O. Now, the polar bonds and polar molecules can be explained using these two examples. So let's have a quick look at what they actually look like. Here is methane, and it's got the, little, um, the polarity of each little part in there as well. Um, hydrogen is a little bit more electronegative than carbon. So what happens, hydrogen in this case ends up with a little delta negative because it has the higher electronegativity. Each hydrogen is more electronegative than the carbon itself. So this bond here is polarized, this bond here is polarized, this bond here is polarized, and this bond here is polarized. Okay, so within each of these bonds, you get some polarity happening. But if I was to take this and look at the whole molecule itself, the whole thing overall, what you'll see is we have no overall balance, sorry, we have a balance in charge overall. That means no matter where I stand in this molecule around here, I'll have an even amount of charge. Every little end of it, every little part of it, has a negative charge. This means we have a non-polar substance here. Okay, this has polar bonds, but is not a polar molecule itself. Because we have this symmetry here, because this uh, molecule here is symmetrical, it is a non-polar substance. Moving our way over here, and we're looking at um, water, H2O, we get um, the hydrogens now are positively charged because they have a less ele lower electronegativity than oxygen here. So the hydrogens here are positive and here are positive, and the oxygen here is negative. That means, okay, we have two polar bonds between the atoms, so a polar bond here and a polar bond here. But because we don't have symmetry here, because we have, if we were to draw a line straight down the middle of this molecule, we would have an overall negative charge on one side of the molecule and an overall positive charge on one the other side of the molecule, this is a polar molecule. Methane is not a polar molecule because it is symmetrical. It has symmetry about every single axis. axis. Okay? If I was to draw a line down here, it would have symmetry, it would have negative on both sides, not a difference in charge. However, water, on the other hand, is not symmetrical. It's what we call asymmetrical. It then is a polar molecule. So what the key thing here is, is that polar molecules are asymmetrical. They are non-symmetrical. So if you have a molecule which is not symmetric, so it is asymmetrical, there is no symmetry in the molecule, such as water here, we know this as a polar molecule because we have an overall negative, a slight negative end, and an overall slight positive end. That's what polar means. With methane here, just a reminder, because we don't have two poles, we have all negative ends here, we don't have symmetry. So we have symmetry, we have a, if we have symmetry, it is non-polar, 
If we do not have symmetry, it is polar. That's the end of this podcast. That's the end of explaining how we determine polarity and look at polarity. What we need to look at next is what polarity can do for us. And the next podcast is going to be about how we can look at solubility in terms of polarity and how melting points and boiling points can be determined in terms of polarity as well. So stay tuned to that.